Hello, this is Dr. Keith Miller again, and today in this hands-on video, I'm going to first look at folds and then faults to look at their characteristics, how you distinguish different types of folds and faults, get familiar with some of the terminology that's used to describe them, and some of the symbols that are used to indicate these structures on a geologic map. So the first thing I want to start talking about is something called strike and dip which is an important way in which a map can mark what the orientation of any surface is, whether it's a, a bed or a fault or any kind of a geologic structure, and be able to indicate what the orientation of that unit is in three dimensions. So let's say, for example, I have a surface which is now dipping toward you and you can see the strike and dip symbol and the horizontal line is the strike right so the horizontal line on the strike line is a horizontal line drawn on any surface okay and so in this case if I'm uh, facing north, this would strike east and west, right? So the strike would be east and west. So drawing any horizontal line on a surface represents the strike. And the orientation of that, the compass orientation of that is the strike. The shorter line that's a perpendicular to the strike is the dip, right? So that shows in what direction the the surface is dipping. So if I were to uh, turn around and dip it in a different direction, then that dip line would again have to point in the direction of the dip of that particular bed. So, you can have any orientation in three dimensions, and that strike and dip will tell you what the, that orientation of that bed is. Okay, so that's the first important um, symbol to understand on geologic maps. So, let's look at, at folds. Um, so, again, I have a stack of paper here, and there are some different colored papers, so you should be able to maybe see um, the different colors representing different beds, different uh, lithologies of, of rocks. And if I bend the beds this way, this is an anticline, right? So the center line of the fold that divides the fold into two symmetrical parts is called the fold axis. So the fold axis runs down the center of that fold. So if I was to draw a fold axis, uh, it would be like that, right? So that line represents the fold axis. And in an anticline then, the beds on either side of the fold axis dip away from the fold axis. That makes an anticline. And importantly, the beds that are on the center of the fold and here in the middle are older or underlie the beds at the top. So those are the two things that define an anticline. The Beds on each side dip away from the fold axis, and the beds in the center are older than the beds at the top. Okay, so that's an anticline. A syncline is the opposite, right? So now the beds on each side of the fold axis dip toward the fold axis, and the center of the fold is actually the younger beds. The beds on top, the beds underneath, are the older beds. So 
So a syncline has youngest beds in the middle and the beds on each side are what's called a limb. These are called the limbs of the fold, dip toward the fold axis. Now, there's several different ways in which you describe the orientation of a fold. If the fold axis is horizontal, like I'm holding it now, that's called a symmetrical fold. And the, what's called the axial plane runs all the way through, there's a plane that cuts all the way through that fold and divides it into two symmetrical parts. Okay? It's called the axial plane. We'll come back to that in a minute. Now, if I take this fold and I now plunge it, so this is now a plunging anticline, so the fold axis is actually inclined. And notice there's an arrow at the end of that fold axis. That's the way it would be shown on a geologic map, indicating that this fold axis is plunging. This fold is plunging, right? So this would be a plunging anticline. Now, interestingly, if I take this plunging fold and I cut it, so imagine you wrote off the top, so you cut this off, as a plane, what you would see on a surface map is actually a curve, what's called a nose of the fold. When you see that kind of a curve on a geologic map, you know that that fold is plunging. And similarly, if it's a syncline and I plunge it, we now have a plunging syncline. In both of these cases are symmetrical folds and the axial plane is vertical. Now, what happens if I tilt the axial plane? Okay, that would mean like turning it over like this. Okay, this is now an inclined fold. This would be an inclined anticline. So the axial plane is tilted over on its side. And you can do the same thing with the syncline. Tilt it over on its side. Again, the same things apply as far as the bed stepping toward the axial plane. And in the case of a syncline, the beds on the center are younger than the beds uh, at, the, uh, at the bottom of the the syncline. So just to review, we have symmetrical anticline, we have a plunging anticline, and we have an inclined anticline. And folds can sometimes even be completely turned upside down or sideways, in which case they're called recumbent. They're lying over on their side. So in the next video, I'll look at faulting.